Hi there, and welcome to Live at Gilmore Guitars. I'm David Gilmore, and this is podcast number 54. And today, to talk about and sing songs from her ninth record, Follow the Fire, it's Lynn Jackson, Live at Gilmore Guitars. Some people are mystery novels, some are short stories, some are car songs, and it's easy to sing along. Some people are Live at Gilmore Guitars, this is podcast number 54, and in the shop today we've got Lynn Jackson. Hi, David. <laughs> welcome to the shop and welcome to Alberta, and uh, you have a brand new record that is not actually released yet. Uh, technically, no. Technically, no, but it's, it, it's, it's kind of out there, but uh, uh, the new record is called Follow That Fire. Right, yes. And uh, there's lots of things I want to talk about with this this record, but you're not officially going to release it until September. Well, when but, the, when but the, mm, you're sorry. out, you're, you're out here touring the record. Yeah, it is. It's kind of a funny thing. Uh, the, the people in Kitchener, Ontario who play in my band, they also play in and all of them play in about eight different bands. Mm-hmm. So to get everybody together to try to <laughs> have a couple of rehearsals, uh, it's a bit like herding cats. It's yeah. like really trying to, it's really impossible. And, uh, and, and then getting a date, uh, there are only a couple of original venues left in Kitchener. So okay. getting the date, they're pretty booked up. So, and, and I had already started to book this tour. So I, I mean, it's kind of neither here nor there. I'm out here. Uh, it's kind of like a release tour, but technically it's in September. And you have a large body of work to choose from. Anyway. Uh, yeah, you, this is album you've been number this, nine. Yeah, you've been doing this for a long time. So tell me a little bit about your history then. 
Uh, well, I started playing, well, I released my first album in 2004, um, totally independently. And I had started playing out uh, maybe in the late 90s. I've been playing guitar for a couple of years, and then I'd, ar- I'd always written uh, lyrics and poetry from my high school days on, and <clears throat> it finally, I kindly, I kind of finally decided to put them together with music, the words and the music, and that didn't really start to happen until the early 2000s. And uh, I've always been a, a I mean, the, th- the first thing I ever wanted to be when I was a kid was a singer. So I always kind of felt like I had a good sense of melody in my head and listened to a wide variety of stuff uh, over the years. And yeah, it just kind of happened naturally. So uh, the approach to the craft, uh, I read that you sort of see an entire song uh, before you actually write it. You you kind of know exactly what's going on before you... It, put- well, it's it's always different. I mean... Usually, I mean, I think I know what that remark is referencing, and it's it's about uh, I, I always write the lyrics before I put the music right. to it. Uh, but a lot of times, I get the idea for a song, and it just flows like it. I picture the whole thing like a little movie in my head, right. and it flows out, and then I match the music to the mood of the story, um, and often. <laughs> I think a lot of songwriters might not like this comment, but a lot of times uh, the songs that I feel really, really good about, they come out in about 10 minutes. Right. And I'm just scrambling to get it all down before it evaporates into the air. <laughs> and it, it, so what? how do you do that? So when you, you have the song and it's all together, you've got a recording device right there, your phone or something I've, to get it? or Well, I... I I've been writing for a while now, so the process has evolved a little with a bit of technology. <laughs> and you're prepared. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, what I used to do is I would get the melody in, in my head, and I would play the song over and over and over again, so it would become ingrained. Often late at night, and you're really tired, and you just don't want to forget the song. Um, but now I just uh, have a little really super old laptop. I just flip it open, and I hit GarageBand, and I demo it like even if it's just the bare bones of the song and then i can easily flesh it out later all right let's get a song in okay this is podcast number 54 live at gilmore guitars with lynn jackson I'm 
minutes will let up and wear you down. So many roads will lead you to forget. Listen to me now, it's time, it's not one for waiting. Seek out those things in your heart of hearts. Don't let the days pass, always waiting for nothing. Follow that fire, the light will keep you from harm. Follow that fire and keep the ears from tearing you. Live at Gilmore Guitars with Lynn Jackson, podcast number 54. Uh, that, that's a really nice song. That's the title track. That's excellent. So let's talk a little bit about uh, Follow That Fire. Okay. Uh, you had uh, a really cool guy produce this record. I in, did. In actually. Michael Timmons from the Cowboy Junkies. That's right. How, how did you uh, get to meet Michael and, and how, did, how did that whole thing come about for you? Well, it's kind of it's kind of funny. The head of my label, Mark Logan, mm-hmm. uh, Busted Flat Records. Uh, as as we talked about earlier, I have a bunch of albums out, and I've always had a role in producing or co-producing the albums. And at a certain point, you just kind of you run out of ideas. You don't want to tread over the same ground all the time. Mm-hmm. And so I asked Mark. I, I kind of said that to him. I, I said I. I think I'm fresh out of production ideas and I'd really like to work with a producer who has a reputation for doing cool stuff, um, a bit, maybe a bit experimental. Um, yeah. And I don't know if you know, I think it was called the Nomad series from the Cowboy Junkies. They put out a, Mm -hmm. and some of the stuff on there is pretty, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty out there. And, uh, I, unbeknownst to me, Mark approached, Michael Timmons and just cold call emailed him and asked him if he'd be interested in working with one of his artists. And the thing was last summer, the Cowboy Junkies headlined the Kitchener Blues Festival. Right. So last summer, uh, we went backstage and we got to meet him and he was a super great guy, really nice, easygoing. And um, I sent him some demos and he agreed to take me on. Cool. So approach-wise, what did he do differently than what you may have done? On your own record? Uh, well, I sang differently. Uh, it's it's a bit more intimate. Okay. Uh, the vocal delivery. Um, and uh, he made a few changes to a couple of songs. Uh, and for the most... Uh, I wrote all the songs on the acoustic guitar. Mm-hmm. There are on, there's only acoustic on, I think, two or three, tra- three tracks on this. He took a lot of my uh, acoustic parts and he played his own electric parts. Okay. Um, so it, I guess, and that already changes the tone of a record mm-hmm. when you do that. Um, and he, he had some really brilliant, uh, uh, session guys, a friend, long time friends of his in Toronto, uh, come into the studio, uh, pedal steel and organ and keyboards and slide guitar and plus, uh, plus what he played on the electric and, and yeah. So I think he was really just going for a vibe and a mood. Okay, where did you record it? At the Hangar Studio in downtown Toronto. It's actually beside Hugh's room. Okay. Yeah, that's his studio. Yeah. So. Okay, very nice. Yeah. Let's get another song in. Okay. And we're doing all songs from this new record called Follow That Fire. What yes. are we going to do now? I am thinking of doing a fairly ambitious finger-picking song. I finger-pick it on the album. Um, it's It's kind of a... Well, I hate to give it away ahead of time, but it's it's in the murder ballad genre. Nice. I like that. <laughs> Live this at Gilmore. This seems like a really nice listening room, I think. Perfect. I'll. Live at Gilmore Guitars, podcast number 54. This is Lynn Jackson. Alice walked three miles to the store carrying a heavy load. 
shoes were worn and her belly wide as she trudged through the snow. The wind was cold, but the sun was warm and high in the sky. She counted her blessings and thought of JP as she picked up her supplies. They lived together for a number of years in a house on the county line. They've been trying hard to fill that house, trying for some time. Her sister Red Marie had been helping till the baby come. She'd taken it in stride when the doctor said she couldn't have one of her own. Living in a small town means strength in numbers too. And everyone knows everyone in everything that you do. Seems everyone but Alice knew that JP was stepping out. He loved his wife, but a local redhead satisfied his appetites. It was late on a Tuesday when Alice fell, pain below. She called JP and her sister when the water broke. And the re rushed over to help deliver the child in time. Alice cried tears of joy as her baby girl arrived. Alice was delighted by her girl's full head of hair. All golden red, a color that the sisters share. Living in a small town means strength in numbers too. And everyone knows everyone and everything that you do. Outsiders can't understand this garden that we grew. A beautiful flowers hide the secrets in our roots. Outside they could hear a car coming, rushing in the night. And Marie set the baby aside and reached for a nearby knife. She said, Sister, I have to stand by and watch you get everything my whole life. Couldn't steal JP, so I'm taking the baby. Now you have to die. And she stabbed her six times in the chest, watched her cock her like that. JP opened the door. And his smile turned to shock. And Marie was talking low when she took a pistol from her purse. You were greedy and Alice is gone. But now I have a baby to love. Now I have a baby to love. And she shot him dead in the doorway, wrapped up the baby and stepped out into the night. She drove away from their town toward their new life. Living in a small town means strength in numbers too. And everyone knows everyone and everything that you do. Outsiders can't understand this garden that we grew. Our beautiful flowers hide the secrets. In our roots, in our roots, live at Gilmore Guitars with Lynn Jackson. This is podcast number fifty-four. It's always cool when you hear a murder ballad. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the last day of the tour. It is. Uh, you're playing at. Uh, Roosters Wood Fire and Smoke tonight for a dinner am, show, yes. and then, and then back to uh, back home to to Kitchener. Kitchener's I home. have a couple of days off in Calgary with some friends, mm-hmm. and I get to relax and uh, 
Uh, actually, uh, tomorrow night I'm planning on seeing a fantastic blues artist, Tim Williams. I uh, love Tim. I know Tim. Uh, we went out to, my friends took me out Tuesday to see him at Mikey's Cheek Joint, yeah. and I was just blown away. He's amazing. So uh, he's playing with a band on Friday night, uh, so we're going to... So good. Uh, a very good friend of mine hosts house concerts, and Tim does an annual show there every January. Oh, just nice. So good. I love house uh, concerts. He, he's got great stories I know and, and, and all of his stories are real because he knew the people he's talking about yeah. you know he grew up in in Southern California I emailed the artistic director of the Kitchener Blues Festival which is a huge a huge festival in our town mm -hmm. and uh, they'd already heard of him because he won the Memphis Challenge a yeah. few years ago yeah yeah he's, he's deservedly he's, so he's amazing a, he's a pretty amazing cat and a really really nice guy too. yeah really I didn't cool. get to talk to him but yeah. hopefully I will on Friday yeah. So uh, this is the end of the, the line for this particular tour, but you had a little bit of trouble on your way out here. You, <laughs> you, you, you flew Air Canada uh, to Regina? Uh, from Winnipeg to Vancouver. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And then you had a... And I showed up and my guitar didn't show up. A mishap with a guitar. So how did that all unfold? Oh, wow. <laughs> it was a lot of stress. Uh, they misplaced my guitar on a Sunday, on the long weekend Sunday. Yep. Uh, I didn't actually have it in my hands until 10 hours later. And I, I arrived around 1 o'clock, or I arrived around noon, so I didn't actually get it until around 10 o'clock. Right. And uh, I'm just really glad I didn't have a show that night. It was very stressful. And, and I, I, I mean, they had an online thing and a phone number that you could, they gave me to call. I was on hold. I was on hold for half an hour. Wow. Nobody picked up. And then the online thing, when you tried to submit, you got an error message. The system was down. Oh no! And then I finally got my case, my guitar back, and the case had a chunk out of the it, my travel hard travel case had a chunk out of the tip, and then the back end around the thick round part yeah. was split in three places. It's crazy. The it's guitar crazy. was okay, yeah. thankfully, but yeah. it was it was a whole day of stress when I was supposed to be hanging out with some. Well, I'm glad the guitar came through it well. I, I'm sad that you had that stress. It's it's crazy. It's mm -hmm. uh, like I, I mean, I build guitars, so I know how fragile they are, but I also know how resilient they are. You really have to be willful to do damage to to a guitar like yeah. like some of the guitars that you see like uh, you know don ross has had some some major issues with airlines and guitars in and our they, area kevin ramasar yeah he had and, the, the whole headstock broke yeah, off you really you re i wrapped the headstock actually in a sweater in my case it's a good <laughs> idea so it has no place to go so let that be a lesson to all you listeners out there with you're traveling with your guitar make sure that headstock has no place and to i go actually the kept the tension on my strings mm -hmm. Instead of loosening them like a lot of people do, yeah. I don't know if that makes a difference. Six of one, half a dozen. Right? Yeah. Everybody's I've heard got, that. Everybody's got an a different on that, idea. So yeah. that's cool. <laughs> All right, Lynn. Thank you so much for coming in and joining us here at uh, Thanks Gilmore for having Guitars. Me, David. Let's get one last song in here okay. before we go. Uh, I'm going to do "Meet Me in the City," which is a tribute to a friend of mine, Paul McLeod, who was uh, in the Sky Diggers, mm -hmm. if you've heard of them, yeah, for absolutely. a number of years. And he had standing gigs in Guelph and Kitchener, one of my mentors in, in Kitchener, and he passed away last summer. Okay. And Andy Mays actually sings some beautiful harmonies on this track. On the, on the I was going to ask you about that. I saw yeah. that Andy was on the record. So that's he that's was, very he cool. He was part of the tribute. It was really fantastic. Nice. So this is called Meet Me in the City. Live at Gilmore Guitars, podcast number 54. This is Lynn Jackson. In my dreams, the faces are being replaced. In the words, are strange but gentle and full of grace. They are calm and they are knowing. They are looking forward to where they're going. One more time for reminiscing Connected to me, connected to each other The bonds are strong, we will remember, we'll remember I'm there 
Live at Gilmore Guitars, podcast number 54 with Lynn Jackson. So let's let the people know how they can contact you, how they can buy your many CDs and records <laughs> that you've recorded, how they can get concert tickets. Okay, the best place to find me, uh, two different websites, uh, lynnjackson.net and bustedflatrecords.com. And uh, both of those websites list all my gigs and uh, have bio information and, and details about how and shops details about how to pick up songs I'm also on iTunes as well so you can just do a search for Lynn Jackson Kitchener or the various album of the title and you can find me there as well excellent mm-hmm. Lynn thank you very much for hanging out here at uh, Gilmore Guitars this afternoon thanks so much for uh, having me this is beautiful guitar thank you very much <laughs> live at Gilmore Guitars podcast number 54 Tim the Camp <laughs>